Hello guys, Crisp here and welcome back to another video. In this one, my friends, I'm going to be testing the Gainward Ghost RTX 4070 at 4K resolution. Yesterday, I tested the 4070 at 1440p and it did a really good job, but that was kind of expected. You know, it's a $600 card targeted at 1440p gaming. So, of course, it does a great job at 1440p. Now, 4K is a totally different beast, as you probably know. For reference, 1440p is around 3.7 million pixels, while 4K is around 8.3 million. That's a lot of pixels. <laughs> so, of course, you need a heck of a lot more horsepower as well as more VRAM to make 4K gaming happen, smoothly at least. But first, let's talk about the ghost in the room. This Gainward Ghost Edition of the card is not a factory overclocked version, it's actually one of the models that is supposed to be available at MSRP. And what corners did they cut to get to MSRP? Well, for starters, the unboxing experience is pretty normal stuff, nothing too fancy, you know, but that doesn't really affect anything, obviously. The cooler shroud and the backplate are all plastic, but it doesn't feel flimsy whatsoever and it doesn't creak at all, and it runs every so slightly hotter than the Founders Edition, but the maximum that I've seen was 70 or 71 degrees Celsius, and it usually stays around 67 to 69 nice degrees Celsius. That's pretty good. The card is also a little bit louder than the Founders Edition, but I can't really hear it over the CPU fan anyways, so I would say it's quiet, and it also has a little bit of simple RGB as they call it. Now, one thing that I really liked about this design, aside from the cutout over here for better airflow, is the 8-pin power connector. I was not expecting to see that make a comeback with the RTX 4070. I'm happy to see it here. That means that you don't need an annoying dongle to connect it to your power supply. So yeah, overall, based on my testing with a 20 degree room temperature, this ghost is nothing to be scared of. And lastly, in terms of specs, I will leave a GPU Z screenshot so you guys can take a look at them. Let's get to the games now! Shall we? Oh boy. First up we got Cyberpunk 2077 at 4K resolution using the high settings preset. I'm just gonna disable FSR over here as well as motion blur. So this is native 4K resolution and we're not utilizing the ray tracing here today because if you're playing at 4K with a 4070, I really don't recommend ray tracing, <laughs> right? And uh, at native resolution, it is surprisingly getting around the same FPS, maybe slightly higher uh, than it did at 1440p, ultra settings with ray tracing turned on, native resolution. So that means that enabling DLSS will probably get us 60 plus most of the time, which is quite nice. And that's DLSS quality, by the way. Oh my god, no, no, there's Bob right there. Bob is right, today he's not gonna run away. Okay, guys, he's definitely not gonna run away. Where's my weapon? Oh, there we go. Goodbye, Bob! Get tased to death! Actually, he didn't die, because we're on YouTube. Everything you must be family friendly, yeah? <laughs> anyway, uh, it doesn't drop from 30 FPS, but this is not really what I'd call a very enjoyable experience in Cyberpunk. So let's enable DLSS Super Resolution on quality and see... It looks super similar to native res, maybe slightly better once again because it gets rid of some of the noise and softness that is introduced with the TAA. And now it is not dropping from 60 FPS. Maybe it did, but I didn't notice it. But yeah, it feels very responsive, very smooth at the same time. Damn it, I, I, it doesn't make me a good driver whatsoever. But yeah, on high settings and 60 plus FPS DLSS quality, it is looking fantastic. You don't really need ray tracing to make the game look beautiful. And uh, it shows right here. Like, this is really good. This is actually a great 4K experience. I would play all day long like this. And you still have that DLSS frame generation, which is gonna be insane, basically. Enabling that with DLSS quality, don't know why that always sets itself to auto, uh, puts us in the 80s. So we get an, an extra like 20 to 30 frames per second, I would say. Not too bad, but you can notice that uh, the reflections on the ground, for example, are a little bit more noisy than they were previously. I think since it was already 60 plus on the LSS quality, I would use the LSS quality. But if you want to stay above 60 100% of the time with no drops whatsoever, this is maybe 
an even better option, right? On a smaller monitor, I doubt a lot of people would be able to tell the difference between FG enabled and disabled at 4K, that is. Next is Call of Duty Warzone 2 at 4K resolution using the Ultra Settings preset, but I set the texture resolution to high instead of the default normal because apparently 12 gigabytes at 4K is only good enough for normal textures. Maybe. <laughs> we'll find out, of course. And I also disabled the depth of field. All right, so at native resolution, things are not really looking all that great, honestly. Well, in terms of FPS, at least. Uh, yeah, it was dropping from 60. That's definitely not what you want in Warzone 2. So I think I'm just going to enable some DLSS here on quality with 69 sharpness, as usual. <laughs> what? I I'm being... How? I did, I'm not even in the ground yet and I'm already being tracked. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, I'm gonna start counting our frames here. Grab some weapons. There we go. Okay, the game, the game is giving me weapons at the moment. And we're here in Zarqua Hydroelectric, which is one of the most intensive areas in the entire game. I'm about to do the most intensive thing, which is jump into this water right here. And it only drops into the 70s. So it is actually gonna be a pretty alright experience. 1% lows in this game are always kind of meh, so uh, yeah, it's, it's at 50s, but it doesn't really feel that stuttery to me. So um, I think this is actually not too bad for something like a 4070. The LSS at 4K also looks all right. In this game, the DLSS implementation is quite crap, honestly. I don't really like it too much, but you know, it's 4K resolution, so it doesn't really bother me as much as it does at like 1440p or 1080p. Obviously, if you want a competitive experience in this one, you have the option to play, oh, oh there's a guy right there, uh, at low settings instead of ultra, which a lot of people do. Oh, Wait a second. Uh, I'm gonna die here if I stay there, all right? I went to see the FPS in this forest area, so let's go. There he is. Wait, wait, maybe we can do this now. Anyways, the forest <laughs> area right there is usually not as intensive as the water, so it would probably drop into like the high 70s. The last VRAM of us part one is next. This is the one that a lot of people were waiting for. It uses 14 gigabytes of VRAM at 4K ultra settings. This is native resolution, by the way, with no DLSS. We're still in the menu and that frame time graph is already crazy. Uh, and as you can see, yeah, the ultra settings preset right here. All right, here we go. Let's start counting our frames. You can see the frame times. Oh, that frame time graph is just crazy bad. It's super stuttery here. It doesn't feel smooth whatsoever, although that could be because of 30 FPS, you know. But yeah, sometimes it will have a huge frame time spike and it's just not enjoyable in my opinion. Okay, um, I think we should stop it there already. <laughs> so let's try our first trick up our sleeves. DLSS super resolution on quality. Let's lower that sharpness a lot because it looks really over sharpened in this game. And that lowers it from 13.8 gigabytes to 12.3. And it's only slightly running out of VRAM at the moment at 102% uh, right there in the bar. So it doesn't really look very similar to native resolution, I gotta tell you that. This game is just... It's weird when it comes to the DLSS implementation. It has a lot of shimmering, a lot of noise, especially on the water. Like, can you see that? It... <laughs> I don't like the implementation in this one, but maybe on a smaller monitor, like 32 inches, 27, 28 inches, it might look good. Now, it will drop from 60 in other areas of the map, especially by the end of my benchmark run that I have over here. But this is pretty impressive, going from a super stuttery 30 to 40 FPS experience with really low 1% lows to 60. This is impressive. <laughs> Not gonna lie, this is very impressive. It feels playable, honestly. Maybe it will crash. I, I don't know. If we spent like 20 minutes playing the game, like I did with like the 3060 Ti, it might crash. <laughs> but for now, it's actually decent. Now we could also try it on high settings, which eases out things by a lot, as you can see. Two less gigabytes of VRAM almost, of usage here. And 
So I'm going to try to apply that, restart the game, and uh, continue on with this. Let's just drop the LSS right now. So this is native 4K. Ooh, those frame times are back in the menu again. And now we're seeing less FPS, look at that, dropping into the lower 40s at times. Also lower graphical quality, those textures, well, they're not really looking all that bad, honestly, for high textures. I thought it was going to look a bit worse. It's probably because we are playing at 4K that they look decent. Here we go. Actually, I'm going to avoid all of them, I don't care. I just want to get out of here, because this is where it drops the most, and it's only dropping into the 40s still. All right, frame time variations there, but not really that noticeable, honestly. I guess if you lock it to like 30 or 35 FPS, maybe even 40, it should give you a, a smooth-ish experience on high. Okay, quickly, guys, quick. I'm, I'm spending way too long here in The Last of Us, but I just I want to, to test DLSS on quality and high settings. Let's just lower that sharpness again. It gets a 60s in this area, again. It's way more intensive than the previous area where we tested Ultra, and it's getting 60s, and uh, at these settings... Get out, get out, thank you very much, Ellie. It won't really stutter whatsoever because it's impossible for it to run out of VRAM. As you can see, it's below 10 gigabytes of usage at the moment. So yeah, maybe play like this? I am still very surprised that the game is, is very playable at 4K. Let's take it easy now with Forza Horizon 5, which I am sure is gonna run very well. 4K resolution, TAA, which looks better than these two for some reason in this game, and we're using no DLSS. I will be testing this game separately with frame generation and everything, uh, but for now, no DLSS on extreme settings. So this is native resolution, all right? And it seems to be running very well. Look at that, 80 frames per second, touching 90 at times. This is perfectly all right for Forza Horizon 5, you know. I'd be fine with like a 60 FPS locked experience, and this GPU can definitely provide that at native 4K resolution. We're going really fast now. Please get out of the way, people. Are you serious? Oh my goodness. All right. Anyway, let's do the jump here, touching 100 frames per second. Also, VRAM is totally under control in this game as well. It has some great looking textures. Oh boy, oh boy, no, I am so sorry. I, I wrecked the entire thing. Look at the car now, such a shame. Also dropping into the 60s at times in bushy areas with a lot of vegetation and stuff. And finally, the city area. Will it drop? Actually, it isn't dropping. That's impressive. I thought it was going to drop into the 60s at least here, but no, this is less intensive than the bushy areas that we've been to already. Now, the most intensive part of this entire game is this little tunnel right here when you get out of it. It's probably going to drop from 60 FPS, but it doesn't really bother me too much. As you can see, actually, no, it doesn't. That's very impressive. <laughs> okay, that's all I have to say. And that power usage, by the way, really good, really good. Dude, this is actually pretty damn good for 4K, what the hell? 4K resolution, Apex Legends, using the highest settings aside from this one. And uh, yeah, it's getting 100 FPS while looking at the entire map. Now, in this area, it will definitely drop because it's a broken area in Apex Legends. That's why I'm gonna go there first, start counting our frames. 80s, 90s, well, nobody dropped here with me today, that's very nice. Um, so, ooh, jumping to the 60s at times. Yeah, if you are a really competitive person, you might want to drop some settings, especially if you drop here in the waterfall, but everywhere else, no, no. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We can do this, we can do this, we can do this, wait a second. Nice. Nice. All right, I got the boy. Everything is okay. Let me just grab this. Anyway, um, as I was saying, as long as you stay away from this area, not sure if that was what I was saying, but let's go with that. <laughs> uh, you're going to be fine. Oh, there's one of them. No, 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 no. No more ammo. No more ammo. Throw in smokes. Throw smokes. Go, go, go. Get out of here, boy. Damn bastards. No, no, no. Oh, this is a shotgun. I thought it was somewhat like a... a, a uh, bolt action like this one. Yep. No. no! No! Okay, we're dropping in a little bit of a different area now, guys. Getting 120s. 
Yeah, it's not going to be high refresh rate all of the time. You saw the FPS dropping inside of the smokes and stuff like that. And even though I am playing this with 60 hertz because of the capture card, I could still feel a little bit of a slowdown or input lag augmentation. <laughs> Now, whenever nothing is happening, and even near grass, which is usually intensive in Apex, it's getting pretty high FPS, not gonna lie. But if I was going to play this game a little bit competitively with the 4070 at 4K, I'd drop it to low settings, honestly. At 1440p you didn't need to do that, but at 4K is kind of needed if you want consistent performance, you know? Especially if you throw out a smoke or um, an ultimate, for example, it, it will just get wrecked, basically. It will drop from 60 even. Hello there. <laughs> so let's move on to the next one, that's it. All right, so we're playing Battlefield 2042 at 4K resolution using the ultra settings and quality DLSS. Ray tracing is turned off as well, and I'm actually quite pleased with these results for a 47, you know, $600 GPU. It's doing a good job. I tried it first without DLSS, and it actually did drop from 60 frames per second. That I wasn't really that impressed about, but turning on DLSS in this game makes things look pretty much the same as native res. So I definitely do it, that's how I've been playing this with the RTX 4080 um, and I definitely prefer the higher frames per second, especially if it means 60 plus FPS here. Um, sometimes it drops into the lower 60s from what I've seen, I've been playing it for about like 5 minutes in another map as well and yeah, it is a solid experience, it doesn't really drop from 60 whatsoever. Actually, if you've watched my 4070 Ti video, I wasn't really too impressed about that card's performance at 4K resolution, but that's because that's a $900 GPU. This for 600 bucks, I'm actually impressed about the performance, you know, it's 3080 performance more or less. Uh, this reminds me of how I was playing this game on the 3080 Ti when it released, and it was very enjoyable. I think this is actually getting around the same FPS as the 4070 Ti with ray tracing enabled, this one without ray tracing, you know, uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a very enjoyable experience, what else is there to say? I like it, I really like this. Now it's Spider-Man Remastered at 4K using TAA, native resolution and the very high settings preset with no ray tracing enabled. Once again, similar performance to what I've seen already with like the 3080 Ti. Probably closer to the 3080, but you know, without seeing things side by side, I'd say it's a very similar experience to what I got back when I played this game on 3080 Ti. And that, that's just amazing. The performance, the graphics, everything looks buttery smooth and looks beautiful at the same time. All right, now in the Central Park area, things are starting to drop by a bit. Look at that. Oh boy. Oh boy, 60s. Still hasn't dropped from 60 though, but this is a more GPU intensive area whenever you don't have ray tracing enabled. Yeah, I think it won't really drop from 60 frames per second. Maybe in like a very demanding cutscene or whatever. I don't really recommend the LSS in this one, by the way. It looks a bit better using native. You can tell the difference actually. Um, so yeah, this is the experience I'd go for in Spider-Man Remastered. And that VRAM utilization is still well under control, even at 4K resolution, 9 gigabytes of usage there. Yeah, it's no super high refresh rate experience like the other 40 series provide, but it is still a really awesome and smooth one. That's for sure. Now it's Fortnite with the Unreal Engine 5.1 at 4K using DirectX 12, high settings instead of yesterday's Epic settings. NVIDIA DLSS is set to quality. It looks basically the same as native in this one. And the lumen is on high, as you can see. So real-time ray traced reflections and global illumination are enabled. And these are very, very intensive settings. If you disable them, you will get like 30, 40 more FPS. It's an insane difference basically but it won't look anywhere near as good as it looks right now so of course it's up to you <laughs> if you prefer the visuals over performance most people playing Fortnite that do prefer the performance obviously it is a competitive shooter uh, so there's that but I do like some of those very nice reflections 
Also, these reflections compared to yesterday's reflections are looking so bad. I'm not sure if it's because of the rain, but on epic settings with epic reflections, it looked super detailed, pretty much the same as looking to the signs, and now it, it's really bad. <laughs> it's pixelated and eh. Me very male looking, you know? The main issue that I have with ray tracing in this game is that it stutters way more than without it. Uh, as you can see, that frame time graph is all over the place, basically, whenever RT is enabled, and you can get a much more stable experience without RT enabled, or the Lumen stuff enabled, or Nanite, whatever, you know? <laughs> but yeah, you can't deny this doesn't look impressive, right? And it's getting 60+, plus, so... Okay, <laughs> not too bad. <laughs> Next is Red Dead Redemption 2 at 4K using the slider all the way to the right here, which means ultra settings mostly, some things are on high and some things are on medium as well. Um, but yeah, it says custom by the way because I disabled the motion blur here. And I, I don't know how this is possible guys, but uh, it's getting 60 plus, at least here in the Saint Denis area, which isn't the most GPU intensive area in the game actually. We're gonna head towards the swamp in a little bit which has a lot of vegetation and it's super taxing on the GPU but I, I wasn't expecting this <laughs> I was actually expecting like 40 50 FPS maybe because with the 4070 Ti I actually maxed the game out manually aside from water physics and it was getting a few more drops into the 50s than this is mainly again because this is set to the preset and the other GPU was set to maximum. And you know what guys, I might need to revisit the 4070 Ti at 4K with adjust settings. A lot of people told me, ah, you're stupid because you just set everything to the maximum, including ray tracing and stuff like that with the 4070 Ti video. And maybe they were right. I should have adjusted a few things because even the 4070 is able to provide a great 4K experience in some games. But at the same time, that was a much more expensive GPU, so I expected a little bit better again from it. <laughs> but uh, yeah. It's solid performance, not gonna lie. Now we have Hogwarts Legacy at 4K using the LSS on quality, which means 1440p rendering resolution and upscaling it. And uh, down here we're using the ultra settings still, okay? You could drop it to high and achieve like 60 plus all of the time, but uh, you know, we're, we're doing a GPU benchmark, so I want to stress it out a little bit further. It's getting 70s here. That is crazy. Hello, Jack, by the way. How's it going, buddy? <laughs> it is getting 60 plus. I just, I can't believe it. It's not native 4K, but it actually looks better using the LSS in this one. And yes, it will still drop into the 50s at times in more intensive scenarios. Hogsmeade is more of a CPU bound area, not really GPU intensive. Uh, down here, it's a little bit more GPU intensive, as you can see, 50s. But it is still a decent and a reasonable experience and a little bit better than what I was expecting. Okay, let's go down here now. Oh, ah, come on. <laughs> Get stuck there. That's magic, by the way. This game has no bugs. It's all due to magic. And over here it should drop once again. Yep, 55, 56. If you play it on balanced DLSS instead of quality DLSS, it will achieve uh, 60 plus all of the time, by the way. I tried it for a little bit. You get like 5 to 10 more frames, which is enough to stay above 60. It's really solid, guys. It, it is a little bit stuttery, not gonna lie, but it's just because of the game. And yeah, 60 FPS on average is decent for a single player game, for sure, especially on this price range, I would say. Come on, dying light. It, it kind of looked like the light was dead at that point because of a black screen. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on. <laughs> this is 4K DLSS quality once again, and this is another game where the LSS actually looks better than native because it's super soft. And we're using the high quality preset now with DX12 and the synchronous compute on. No ray tracing this time around. It actually did a really good job at 1440p with RT with like 90 FPS average or so. Uh, but it would be a little bit too much for 4K, you know? So I disabled it here and it apparently is still providing a great experience. Yeah. All right, high settings still look all right. Oh boy, <laughs> no need to use ray tracing to make the game look pretty in this one. Couple of stutters, by the way. Yesterday it was a little bit smoother. I wonder if it's like the 192-bit memory buzz doing that. A lot of people told me that it was when I was testing the 4070 Ti. Look at that, yeah. 
That's weird, we didn't see those previously. But the fact that we're getting 60 plus consistently, the 1% loads are, are also pretty good. And now it stopped stuttering, kind of. Maybe it was just loading things previously. Yeah, it's quite good, right? You can definitely play the game at 4K. This is a consistent and decent experience. Those 1% lows are just marvelous. My friend, why do I always die? I actually opened a parachute. Like, ah, this isn't fair, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now it's Elden Ring and I can see that that GPU utilization is a bit too high already, so it will probably drop from 60. But the good thing is we're playing at 4K using the maximum settings preset, just disabled motion blur. So on high, it will be a lot less intensive and you can probably get stuck 60 FPS all of the time. Over here is one of the most intensive areas at the beginning of the game at least, and uh, you can see it drop right there, 55 FPS. Yes, it doesn't drop by too much, honestly. I was thinking it, it would be a little bit worse. That, that's like the, the norm here in this video. Every single time I'm expecting worse things. I don't know why, like 600 bucks is still a very expensive price for, for a GPU, of course. I mean, maybe because they targeted it at 1440p, I just thought it would do much worse at 4K, basically. Fight the dragon once again. We need a name for this dragon, Bob, because he sucks. <laughs> yeah, okay, no, no, seriously. Well, at least we started it right here. Let's call our jacks in. There we go, my boys. Good to see you, and let's kill this. Well, that's not going to happen. I just want to see the fire effects, basically. And near the fire, it does drop as well okay it it doesn't drop only in the woods area it also drops here fighting the dragon with those fire effects so yeah if you want 60 plus or, or flat 60 <laughs> uh, you can play on high and it will get that but even on maximum it's still okay it's just not perfect. Now it's the game that loves frame generation. Microsoft Flight Simulator at 4K using quality DLSS. FG is enabled, of course. Otherwise, you usually have CPU bottlenecks in this one. Oh, what did I do? There we go. Ultra settings preset as well, by the way. And 90 FPS. That's, that's actually amazing. This is the type of game where frame generation makes the most difference in because... Yeah, you might be able to tell a little bit more input lag, but you don't really care in Microsoft Flight Simulator. If it was a game like The Finals, for example, which is a first-person shooter that's competitive and it does support DLSS frame generation, I wouldn't enable it there because I could feel a lot of input lag and it messes up with your aim and stuff like that. But in this game... Just enable it, guys, and have fun with FG, because it makes things a heck of a lot smoother. It usually stutters a lot more as well, and frame generation smooths things out in that department at the same time. With my 3080 Ti, when I tested it here in Microsoft Flight Simulator, because it doesn't have frame generation, I was constantly getting like 50 to 60 frames per second with drops into the 40s. And with a card like this, we're getting like 80 plus all of the time. Let's go really close to the ground. Oh boy, here we go. And also, yeah, the, the textures are looking like crap, but they always do for some reason. <laughs> and we're finally approaching the central park area, the most GPU bound part of my benchmark run. Still above 60 FPS, but it is dropping. I saw like 69 for a second there. It dropped our instant lows as well. Oh boy, there we go. <laughs> Well, we, we wrecked the, the entire thing, but it is still staying above 60. Ooh, see that frame generation at work at the moment. A lot of artifacts down here. All right, now it's Overwatch 2. We're playing this one at the ultra settings and using the 4K resolution with 100% resolution scale. And uh, apparently, at the first sight, you might say, well, it's actually getting around the same FPS as the 4070 Ti. Well, it's not, because on the 4070 Ti video, I tested it on Epic settings, not at Ultra settings, and it was getting around these FPS. Epic is way more intensive um, <laughs> than Ultra in this game. So it's another case of me not optimizing the settings <laughs> in that video. Uh, but anyways, let's stop talking about that, all right? Oh my god, I need to eat, I need to eat. Eat things. Oh, we got some healers. That's nice. All right, wait a second. There we go. Nice. Finally got a kill here. 
Alright, yeah, but this is super damn playable, dude. You can make the game look pretty still, alright, on ultra settings. No need to use epic settings and achieve high FPS at the same time. I need to eat again. <laughs> and I need my ultimate. Let's go. There we go. Keep these guys away from us. Come on. Nice. In the face. 90 frames per second, by the way, while I was doing that. Really intensive stuff. Okay. I'm gonna die, am I not? <laughs> yeah, duh. Well, that was fun, actually. Okay, this is intensive. It's it's right around 69. I'm not complaining about that, but it will definitely drop in Jack's Hill. This is GTA 5, obviously, and we are playing it at 4K using two times MSAA. So I'm actually going to disable the MSAA because I went 60 plus all of the time, <laughs> all right? But you already know, with two times, things get really rough. Everything else is set to the maximum, aside from pros to FX, and over on the advanced settings, these are turned on. This one is because it's more CPU intensive and this one keeps resetting to the minimum for some reason. Um, so here we go. Oh, disabling two times MSAA just makes a huge difference. 30 more FPS or so. All right, let's move on out of here. Start counting the FPS and it is looking super sharp. Even on my 42 inch monitor at 4K, it looks amazing. This basically has the same PPI as a 27 inch 1440p monitor. But yeah, GTA 5 is always kind of weird in these 40 series GPUs because uh, it's an older title, DirectX 11, and maybe because it's not really that optimized to run on these cards or the other way around. It, the performance is always a little bit lower than expected. That's not to say that it doesn't run smoothly, because it definitely does. By the way, over here, things drop into the 70s, 60s even. Look at that. Damn, it gets really intensive inside of bushes and stuff. Hello, Jack. How's it going? Always very good to see you, especially at 4K resolution. He looks beautiful. But yeah, as I was saying, even like the 4090 gave somewhat lackluster results in GTA 5 compared to what I was expecting and compared to uh, the difference between like it and the 3090 or 3080 Ti in other games. Over here, it's less of a difference. All right, and lastly, nope, it is not CS2. Unfortunately, I don't have access to it, so uh, CSGO it is. And we're playing this one at 4K high settings, actually, with two times MSAA. All right, so as you can see, 3840 by 2160, I set everything too high so we can have a GPU-bound scenario. Four times MSAA, not two times. <laughs> and uh, it is still achieving super high FPS, higher than any refresh rate on a 4K panel that you might come across. So this is... It's gonna be buttery smooth, basically. If you want to play this game competitively, even at 4K, it is possible. Um, and of course, on low settings, you will achieve even higher FPS, which you might want, because, you know, usually I see people playing this game on low settings. I do it myself. I prefer to have, like, 500 FPS for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, coming across smokes in competitive, for example, will drop your FPS by, like, a good 100, 150, so keep that in mind. Uh, but, you know, just disabling MSAA will give you those, like, 400, 500 FPS, and, yeah, it's gonna be buttery smooth, basically. Let's try out some AWP action here. Get a feel of it, you know, the flicking and stuff. Stop! Oh! <laughs> I missed there, okay. <laughs> Negev versus Negev. <laughs> Always a good combination. Oh, boy. All right, nice. AWP, AFK guy. Yeah, there we go. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, we're just trying out some other weapons here today in the deathmatch because I am feeling lazy to press F3 and uh, stop getting random weapons. <laughs> That's the only reason we're playing with this crap. Oh, yes, the Nova. The Nova is beautiful. There we go. Wait. <laughs> oh, no, not the auto noob. We gotta play this one without aiming down sights. You know, otherwise it's, it's unfair to the people. <laughs> All right, we finished third place. Not bad, considering I started playing at, like, seven minutes. Yeah, but obviously it's completely fine. <laughs> and lastly, we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla running at 4K ultra high settings while I go through the conclusion of this video. This is the built-in benchmark. It ran pretty well. It still dropped from 60, but again, you can adjust some settings and achieve 60 plus. Now the Ghost, as you saw, did a pretty good job. Temperatures were absolutely fine. Frequencies were maybe slightly lower than the Founders Edition, but that doesn't really make a difference whatsoever. You get like half an FPS 
less or so. So it is a pretty nice option at MSRP. Of course, I didn't really take a look at other MSRP cards <laughs> other than the Founders Edition, so there could be better options. But if you end up going with this one, well, feel free. The ghost won't hurt you. All right. <laughs> now, should you buy the RTX 4070 for 4K gaming? Maybe, but maybe not. To be honest, I enjoyed all of the games that we played here today, aside from The Last of Us and maybe Fortnite as well because of the stuttering issues. So for now, in the current games that we have, sure, you can have great 4K experiences with the 4070, especially if you enable the LSS. I guess enabling the LSS is actually a must at 4K with a card like this these days. Now the problem is with those 12 gigabytes of VRAM, I think it won't really be enough for 4K with like high to ultra settings in a year, maybe a couple of years from now. So you might want to find something with a bit more VRAM than this if you want to keep it for a few years and play at 4K. And well, that's been it. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know if you liked my friend Ghost over here. <laughs> it's very different from the Call of Duty one. Uh, thankfully, Call of Duty Ghost sucked. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. As always, love you all. Bye bye